One of the best things you can do to have a successful VBAC or to set yourself up for a successful VBAC is to learn how to gently push your baby out or breathe them down. So one of the first things that we want to do to increase your chance of being able to do that, to give your baby that gentle entry into the world, is to make sure that they are in the ideal position. So the position that we want baby to be in is head down with the back of their head facing the front of your body. If their face is turned towards the front of your body, that is what is nicknamed the, the sunny side up position or the posterior position. So we want to make sure that <clears throat> the baby is not in that position. You can still absolutely have your VBAC if baby is sunny side up, but it can make it a little trickier to get them out and potentially more uncomfortable to, to get them out. So so we want them to, to turn. So again, the back of their head is towards the front of your body before you go into labor. And there are a few ways to, to increase your chances of baby being in the ideal position. So one is to get in the child's pose and like really stick your butt up in the air. So to do that, you're on all fours and then you lay your head down on your hands and get your butt up into the air. And you can also kind of gently sway your hips when you're in this position. And ideally, you know, you can turn on a TV show and get in this position for like five to 10 minutes every day. And of course, if you start to feel lightheaded or woozy, gently move out of the position. But this can help your baby have enough space to turn into that ideal position. You can get on your hands and knees and kind of gyrate your hips. Um, and as often as possible, you want to sit in a position where your pelvis and your belly are tilted forward. So one of the easiest ways to do this is to sit on a wedge cushion. And if you are sitting on a birth ball, make sure that your knees are lower than your pelvis. You also want to avoid sitting in bucket seats as much as possible or like really leaning back in the sofa. You want to kind of lean, lean forward. And then sleeping on your side is also really helpful. Okay, so baby's in the ideal position, great. What are some other things that could make pushing potentially harder? So one thing is lying on your back, which of course a lot of care providers tell women, lay flat on your back, put your feet in these stirrups and push. That's, that's not a great position to push in because it doesn't utilize gravity and it can actually narrow the birth canal. Sometimes that is, that is the position that is needed, but more often than not, um, it's best to lay on your side, get into a squatting position, um, be on all fours when you are pushing baby out or breathing them down. You want to avoid laying flat on your back. <clears throat> and if you have an epidural, ask if you can lay on your side as you're pushing the baby out. Speaking of an epidural, <laughs> that's something else that could potentially make it harder to push because when you have an epidural, it's hard to coordinate your, your birthing muscles and, and pushing can be a little trickier, but certainly not impossible. I have seen many women have a successful VBAC with an epidural. Um, and what I've seen a lot of midwives do when a mom trying for a VBAC has an epidural is to just tell the mom not to really do anything, to do what's called the laboring down technique, which is one of my favorite techniques for pushing a baby out. And essentially this means that you really do nothing but continue to breathe through your surges. So what you're doing is you're just allowing the rhythm and the, the pressures of your uterus to push baby down on its own and you're really not doing anything for a while. Then if you don't have an epidural, you know, when you feel this uncontrollable urge to push and so much pressure down in the perineum, then you can work with your body to breathe down, which I'll, I'll teach you how to do the, that breathing down or to push down. And if you have an epidural, you can just kind of wait for your midwives, or your doctor to say, yeah, like the baby's head is really close. Like let's do a few pushes and they'll guide you through that. But doing this laboring down technique can be really great. It can help to conserve your energy. It can allow your perineum to open more gradually, which can help to reduce your chance of tearing. So the laboring down technique is a, is a great one. And here are a few other ways to prepare your body for 
for this fun phase of labor. Okay, so doing the perineal tissue massage. So this is really less like a massage and more like a vaginal stretching exercise, but it can really help to make the perineum more elastic. It can significantly reduce your chance of tearing and it can be make it can make it easier for the baby to get out. So to do this, what you want to do, and if you're really pregnant when you're doing this, for example, as I record this, I'm about 35 weeks pregnant and I'm massive. Um, so to do this, you, at, at this stage of pregnancy, which is when I usually recommend women start around 35, 36 weeks of, of gestation, sitting on the toilet is one of the easiest ways to access the perineum. And then what you want to do is get an oil that only has one ingredient. So like almond oil, jojoba oil, olive oil, essentially you just don't want anything. You don't want mineral oil. You don't want any kind of scented oil. Again, just one ingredient and you can coat these two fingers or your thumb and then you insert it about two inches into the vagina and then you follow this pattern. And you're again going about two inches in and when you get down to the bottom of the vagina, that, that tautest skin that's in between the vagina and the anus, that's where you really want to push down because if you're going to tear, it's probably going to be in that area where again, the skin is just really tight. So that's where you're like really pushing down, really trying to make that skin more flexible. And again, it's going to really reduce the chance of tearing. And I recommend pushing it to the point of mild discomfort. And as you do that, utilize pain relieving techniques like deep breathing, meditation, just like really relaxing your body as much as possible. And this is going to help to prepare you mentally and physically for that phase of labor where the perineum is like really stretching and some women can kind of freak out or feel, you know, what some people call the ring of fire. And so because you're preparing yourself with this perineal tissue massage, like really pushing down on that area, breathing through that discomfort, it's not going to be as intense or triggering for you when you're going through that phase of labor. So I recommend doing this perineal tissue massage, again, starting at around week 35 of gestation for like five to 10 minutes every night. Okay, we also want to prepare the pelvic structure to work with the baby during labor. And to do this, you can do deep lunges like next to a couch or something like that so you don't get stuck or with somebody spotting you. You really wanna to ease into this, to be gentle with yourself. Um, you can also get into the child's pose, which we talked about before, or get into that cat-cow yoga position where you're on all fours and you arch your back and you bend it down and then you arch your back and all of this helps to relax and lengthen the pelvic floor muscles so again kegels are great they help to strengthen the pelvic floor but we don't want it to just be strong and taut we also want the pelvic floor to know how to relax to be able to be flexible and so these exercises can really help that Okay, so I keep talking about breathing your baby down. <laughs> what does that mean? So there, the really traditional way of pushing <clears throat> is that you take in a deep breath, you hold your breath and you push, similar to how most of us have a bowel movement, right? The birth breath, you take in a quick, strong inhalation in through your nose, or if you're congested, pretend like you have a straw in your mouth and you inhale and then you you exhale and yes technically the air is coming out of your nose but you envision the power of the breath going down the back of your throat down through the uterus and out the vagina and you'll make a subtle sound you'll hear or you'll feel a vibration in the back of your throat as you do this so again and as you do this your shoulders press down your natural expulsive reflex is stimulated and it really has powerful effects with helping the baby come out and i recommend doing this breath when you're having a bowel movement because it can make it a lot easier to get that fecal matter out and it can help to reduce your chances of developing hemorrhoids because you're not doing as much of that heavy duty pushing and so this breath, it can reduce your chance of tearing because you're not doing that heavy duty pushing. 
and it can reduce the chance of hemorrhoids because you're not doing the heavy duty pushing. So I really recommend practicing this breath and it doesn't have to be either or, like this breath or the heavy duty pushing. You can do both in conjunction during birth depending on what feels best for you. But I do really recommend at least trying out this breath to see how it feels in your body and to try it out during labor as well. Something else that's great about it is, you know, when you're doing the heavy duty pushing, when you're holding your breath, your body and your baby are being deprived of oxygen versus when you're doing this breath, you're getting a fairly steady supply of oxygen to your birthing muscles and the baby. So it's easier for everyone to maintain this like state of equilibrium during labor instead of like having oxygen and then being deprived of oxygen and then you have it and then you don't. So this breath can be a total game changer. All right. Um, next, I recommend asking your care provider how they typically guide women through the process of pushing. And, you know, gaining an understanding of the instructions they usually provide can help you determine if their process resonates with you. If it doesn't, then you can have a conversation with them and say, I, I'm wondering if you would be willing to to shift some of those instructions, to be more open to the way I wanna do it. And speaking of that, this is the way I wanna do it. So to know that just because your care provider typically does it a certain way, does not mean that is the way that you have to do it. But this is a good conversation to have beforehand so you're not like negotiating this during, during labor. Okay, you can also ask your care provider to put a warm compress, to put oil on the perineum as your baby's head is coming out. This can help to, to soften the skin of the perineum and to just lubricate that area to make it easier for the baby's head to come out. And so this is something else that can reduce your chances of tearing. And finally, just go completely limp in between contractions when you're pushing your baby out or you're breathing them down. It can take a lot of effort to get the baby out, you know, so when you're not having a contraction, just go totally ragdoll, close your eyes, take slow, easy breaths, fully focus on restoring your energy. Don't worry too much about talking to people or anything like that. Fully focus on yourself and restoring your energy. Mm -hmm.